Back in March 31, 1927, Pio Gama Pinto was born. At age of 80, he was sent to India for his education and spent the next nine years there. He studied science for two years at the Kantar College before joining the Royal Indian Air Force in 1944 as a ground engineer. He married Miss Emma Christine Diaz of Boda in Nairobi on the 9th of January 1954 and had three daughters. After his assassination, Pio Gama Pinto's widow and their children moved to Canada where they still live to this day. At age of 17, Pio Gama Pinto started agitating against the British Raj in India for political freedom for the Goans. He was a founder member of the Goa National Congress whose aim was to liberate Goa from colonial rule. His activity in Goa made it imperative for him to leave Kenya in order to avoid being arrested. Once in Kenya, Pinto worked initially as a clerk, but when he saw conditions in Kenya under British rule, he was drawn to the struggle for independence. In 1951, Pinto started working for the East African Indian Congress movement. He formed relationship with the members and leaders of African Freedom Movement, Kenya African Union, and Workers Organization, and worked towards achieving African Asian unity. When Chege Kibachia, Makan Singh, and Fred Kubai, the movement's leader, were arrested, Pinto joined hands with workers and helped to continue with the movement's work for independence. To further his goal of overthrowing colonialism, he turned into journalism. He participated in the publication of anti-government newsletters together with other African and Asian Kenyans. He wrote and published several newspaper and political posters which he distributed throughout the country. Pinto worked tires tirelessly in 1961 election to bring Kanu to victory. He was the moving force in acquisition of small press and the publishing of weekly Kanu paper Sauti ya Kanu and later came to be known as Sauti ya Mwafrika. In 1963 election Pio was in charge of Kanu election campaign and he worked for all the Nairobi and many other candidates without himself looking for a position in his speech to remember Pinto Bill and Kagia says and I quote his role in the Kanu election campaign of 1961 is great and his contribution towards Kanu's victory is greater than that of any other single person This is the reason why Kanu parliamentary group nominated him and finally elected him as a non-African member to the Central Legislative Assembly. He went on for to work for Kanu after self-government and independence and actively as before right until his assassination. It was his relentless exposure of neo-colonialism and especially his success in establishing the Kenya African Workers Congress in 1964. a trade union organization independent of the US domination that alerted the imperialists to classify him as a man to be watched very closely he began to be known as a leftist firebrand however it was the parliamentary coup that pinto and his radical socialist comrades plotted that was the final nail in his coffin the dawn of uhuru had given rise to a serious ideological rift as kenyatta and his clique of kanu and kadu rightists moved closer to the neo-colonialist the socialist group demanded a ceiling on land ownership a more equitable distribution of wealth and just rewards for the mau mau freedom fighters he was odinga's foremost tactical advisor and link man with eastern embassies Co- commentators say that after pinto's murder odinga's political strategy floundered and never recovered in his eulogy odinga says and i quote Pio Gama Pinto was a great Kenyan patriot. He had immense organization powers and he was a dedicated and intelligent socialist and worked for Kenya to advance its social and economic system for the benefit of the masses. Pinto was the mastermind of the coup plot. When in February intelligence informed Kenyatta that the plot could succeed, Pinto was eliminated. Then began a more concerted drive to destabilize and ultimately Silence the left in Kenya. Pio Gama Pinto was the man who came closest to organizing a real political revolution in Kenya. He was the power behind the progressive group which then controlled 98 of the 158 votes in parliament. On Wednesday morning of 24th February 
Pio Gama Pinto drove his wife, who was personal secretary of the then Minister of Information to work, and then hurried home for a quick breakfast and few minutes to play with Tereshka, his 18 months old daughter, whom he did not often have time to give her. A drive in his car from the front door to the gateway of their home, this little ritual cost him his life, for as he stopped the car to let Tereshka out, a man stepped out of the bushes near the front gate and second man approached him from the right of the driveway and sprayed him with bullets, while the little girl crouched in wide-eyed terror in the back seat watched. It is thought that the assassins had followed him as he drove his wife Emma to her office and would have risked assassinating him in broad daylight in the streets of Nairobi. Kisilo Motua was arrested in February 1965 and jailed for 36 years for allegedly assassinating Pio Gama Pinto. But a day after his release from committee maximum prison in 2001, Motua called a press conference and demanded a probe into the assassination of Pio Gama Pinto, claiming that he was innocent. Pinto was assassinated exactly two days before Malcolm X was assassinated across the Atlantic in New York City and exactly eight years and a day before Mzalendo Kimathi Washiori was hung by the British imperialist at Committee Maximum Prison. Pio faced great temptation, being the only Asian among the Mau Mau, but this did not tamper with his courage and determination to continue his fight for Kenya's freedom and independence. He remained firm and faithful to the cause till the last minute. To further his goal of overthrowing colonialism, Pinto published work range from drafting, writing, printing, and distributing not only newspapers, but memoranda, publicity materials, posters, press, and other statements. Pinto had a hand in the preparation of most of the memoranda and statements issued by Kau in those days, government newspaper and political posters, which he distributed throughout the country, and put up posters in the middle of the night throughout the city. While discussing Goa with Pandit Nehru and other officials of the Indian government, Pio took advantage of the opportunity to ask him for assistance to start a nationalist paper in Kenya. Pandit gave him funds with which Pio began the Pan-African Press Limited, which published South Africa, Pan-Africa and the Nyanza Times. He also helped other African politicians to run their own vernacular newspaper to fight the colonial newspaper monopoly. He did all he could to see that each and every small newspaper, including Inoro Riyagi Koyo and his own concrete paper called the Uzud, went forward. Pio was detained during the emergency because of his nationalist support of the masses and because of the role he played in the formation of the Anti-Imperialist East Africa Trade Union Congress, which was later banned. Pio made many suggestions on ways and means of reorganizing trade union, thereby making them not only stronger, but effective instruments for hastening political and economic independence. In 1962, with Mwinga Chokwe, he formed the Mozambique African National Union in Mombasa, but the British government banned the organization and it went underground. But Pinto had formed valuable contacts with Mozambique nationalists. Later, he worked very closely with Frelimo and often visited Dar es Salaam to assist them. His secret ambition was to quit began being an MP and helped the Felimo to fight for independence of Mozambique. In his eulogy, former deputy speaker and MP for Nairobi Parklands, Remedios Santa de Suos says, and I quote, A few weeks before he was assassinated, he told me that his ambition was to resign his seat in parliament and retire to Lindy or Mtwara on the Mozambique border to assist the freedom fighters actively. End of quote. The death of Mr. Pio Gama Pinto was a real loss to Kenya. He was one of the revolutionary leaders that would have painted a positive picture of our country's politics. That is why Bilded Kagia wrote, and I quote, The murderers who sat down to plan Pio Gama Pinto's death are not enemies for Asian or Pinto's families, but are enemies of all true nationalists, all true Africans, enemies of Kenya, enemies of progress, and enemies of humanity. End of quote. The death of Pinto was not of a lone Asian, but death of a great nationalist, 
a great freedom fighter and a true socialist who did not hesitate to share with his friends whatever little he had.